Number one. My mother watches my kids, Thomas, who's four, and Rose, who's six, while I work. She lives only five minutes away, and my kids have a close bond with her and my dad. She determined, after a few years of me shuttling back and forth to daycare, that she would rather retire and make them her full-time job. When my parents go out of town, we take their dog, Maya. She's a long-haired dachshund black with brown paws that my mum found on the side of the highway as a puppy. Although she always professed that she didn't like small dogs, she was mourning the loss of her black lab only a few months prior, and she brought Maya home to fill the void. She always said she was meant to find her. The thing that you have to understand about this dog is that while she's 100% submissive to my parents, siblings, and my family, she's extremely protective of all of us. She sits next to doors, waiting for my kids to enter the house first, and patiently waits for her turn to have dinner. In contrast, when my husband's father plays with them, tickling and throwing them in the air, we have to crate her because she thinks that he's attacking them. Just about anything in her yard prompts a vicious response, untypical of Daxons, and she doesn't seem to know or care that she is sometimes smaller than the object of her aggression. There is no doubt in my mind that she would attack a bear before letting it get near the kids. She seems happy knowing her place at the bottom of the pack. She's well fed, a little lazy, and her favourite position is draped across my daughter's stomach, napping while my daughter watches TV. You may wonder why I'm bothering to tell you all of this, but it's important. I don't know why my mum saw a tiny black furry thing on the side of the highway, or why she stopped to check it out. I don't know why they decided not to bring her to the beach with them this weekend, as they normally would, only that they asked if we could take her. I do know that we spoil her, and even though she sleeps in a crate at home, we let her sleep with the kids when she's here. Thank God we do. It was around 3am when I woke up and padded up to the bathroom, hoping that I wasn't heading into a bore of insomnia. Usually, before going back to my room, I'll pop into the kids' rooms, turn them right side up, fix thrown blankets, things like that. My house is small, a ranch just big enough for all of us. The bathroom is across the hall from my son's room. Next to his room is ours, with my daughter's across from that. The thing that I noticed through the sleepy haze was that my son's window shade was blowing gently. We had closed all of the windows earlier to turn on the air conditioner, but I thought to myself he must have opened it. All of our windows have safety features, two plastic pieces that we can pop out on the upper frame that only allow the window to open three inches, that stops curious children from falling out and anyone from breaking in. I always keep these engaged on the kids' windows. My son was sprawled sideways, his head resting on the bumper of his bed, with one foot on his pillow and the other propped up on the windowsill. His stuffed tiger was tucked in one arm, his blanket on the other. Dinosaurs and other toys were strewn all over his bed, evidence that he had not gone right to sleep that night. I paused for a moment to watch him sleep in his ridiculous way before fixing everything. They only stay a little for a minute, you know. As I watched him sleep, the shade over the window slowly moved. I should have moved more quickly, I know. But in the middle of the night, when your brain is half asleep, reaction times aren't quite up to par. Honestly, my first thought was that I must be asleep, or having a nightmare or something. As I stood there, in growing horror, a long, pale limb reached under the shade towards him. An arm... Extremely thin, with long fingers, but not quite human. It was too long to be human. It grazed his stomach, still pudgy with the remnants of toddlerhood, and slowly started to wrap around one little leg. It was at this point that I snapped out of my stupor. Nightmare or not, nothing was going to pull my baby out of his bed. Before I made it to the bed though, a little black form came tearing from Rose's room across the hall. With a snarl bigger than her size, Maya latched onto the arm that held Tommy's leg and fiercely shook her head, tearing into the white flesh. 
with a noise somewhere between a screech and a scream. The creature outside the window yanked its arm back outside. Maya followed the retreating appendage, scrabbling at the windowsill as if trying to dig through it, jamming her head through the little gap. Luckily, she couldn't fit. It was a six-foot drop on the other side. Barking and snarling like a possessed dog, she tried to reach whatever it was on the other side. As I gathered my son into my arms, terrified and screaming for my husband, I tried to pull her back into the room. Joe came stumbling into the room, reacting both to my screams and the dog barking. I heard Rose start crying across the hall. I abandoned Maya, pulling a thoroughly confused Tommy out of his bed and running to Rose's room, where I scooped her up too. I put them both on the floor at the foot of my bed, far from both windows in my room, and made sure both were locked. Joe kept asking what happened, and between sobs, I explained there was something outside that tried to take Tommy. He was holding Maya, who was squirming and growling. At first, he tried telling me it was just a dream, but it was hard to deny that something real happened. The dog was still barking. She finally tore free from his arms and took off towards the opposite side of the house. Joe told me to stay with the kids and went into the closet safe for his gun. He doesn't really keep it for home defense as much as for a hobby, being that it takes a minute to get it out. But I was glad he took the minute to take it. He disappeared into the hallway and once he was past the faint nightlight in Tommy's room, he was gone into the dark. The dog was still barking. Long minutes passed. I could hear Maya run from the front door to the back, then to the window in the kitchen, then to the one by the table. Listening to her path, I realised wherever she heard was slowly circling the house. Next the bathroom, then Rose's room. Finally, she ran into our room, and knowing we were close to wherever was outside intensified her aggression. The kids cried, and I tried to muffle their sound without smothering them, telling them everything would be fine. Joe stood at the door, pointing the gun at the window that Maya was currently launching herself at. I heard shuffling, scratching, and the sound of the screen being pulled out of the window. Don't shoot through the window, I begged Joe as loudly as I dared, fearing that if the glass was broken it would just come through. Joe remained silent, motionless, finger on the trigger. We waited for long minutes while the creature outside scratched and banged, looking for weakness in the frame. Finally, it grew silent outside. Gradually, Maya's snarls turned to low growls, and Joe relaxed his grip on the gun. The kids' cries turned to whimpers, and I slowly relaxed my death grip on them. I crept to the window and peeked up under the shade. We lived very close to the centre of town, on the highway, and as much, even in moonless nights, there is a soft glow over the trees from the lights. It's not great for star watching, but it is comforting to me that it's never pitch black outside, except tonight. As I peered out the window, I couldn't help but stand and crane my neck, looking for the lights. The only reason they would be out is a power outage, and we were on the same grid, so that couldn't be it. The highway put out no light as well. I flipped up the stoppers and cracked the window in the front, putting my ear close to the opening. Joe hissed at me from across the room to close the window, and Maya intensified her growl, but didn't move. Outside was dead silence. We live in a quiet neighbourhood, most of our neighbours were the original owners of their homes, built in the 60s. Two doors down from us is a five-year-old that the kids play with regularly. But other than that, there aren't many kids on our block. It was too dark outside. Unnaturally dark. I reached into Joe's bedside drawer for the small flashlight I knew he kept in, in case of a power loss. Keeping the window open only a few inches, I turned on the light and pointed it around. I didn't see anything besides dark, sleeping houses. My courage growing. I opened the window far enough to point the light down. And since I've seen horror movies, up as well. You just never know when the monster is actually on the roof. Right? Anyway, 
With the dog still beside me, and only a low rumbling in her throat, I opened the window just far enough to poke my head out. Shining the light at my neighbor's house, I saw no movement. Absolutely nothing. I stayed there until I started questioning my own sanity. Maybe it was a power loss after all, and my imagination got the better of me. Maybe it was an animal. Why would it stick around with an angry dog making a ruckus? I have no idea. Honestly, why my neighbours weren't angrily calling me, or even awake, was beyond me. Maya had certainly been loud enough. I was about to pull my head inside the window, when a slight movement out of the corner of my eye caught my attention. I shunned the flashlight in that direction just in time to see... Something pale, thin, too tall to be a normal human slipped silently around the corner of the house two doors down. The house where my kid's friend lived. My heart froze and I pulled my head inside, slamming the window shut and grabbing my phone to call 911. Call the Wilsons, I told my husband as I whirled around. They don't have a dog. Number 2 This started about a month ago in weekends. To help better explain the story, I'll explain my house. The house is actually a rather large two-story house, or was. It was split into three separate apartments well before I ever moved in. There are two down on the first floor and one upstairs. The apartment next door is occupied by one of my best friends and the upstairs apartment is very recently empty. I've lived here for over six years with a roommate, our three cats, and my dog. Her and I have never had any issues prior to this, but very recently our dog started barking randomly at nothing during the night, or so we thought. He would look out of the window very intently, then run to the front door barking the whole way. We actually thought he was just seeing a cat or a rabbit and brushed it off, just telling him to hush. One night, My friend and neighbour came knocking and said he thought he had seen someone out on his porch. He said he grabbed a cane and tried to follow them, but they jumped over the porch and ran off. Since then, we made sure to check every time my dog seemingly barked at nothing during the night, and my neighbour had seen a figure suddenly bolt at least twice upon checking. We've called the cops, but they said there wasn't much they could do. They asked if we could think of anyone who would be messing with us, And while there were some neighbours we had occasionally had to call the landlord on, there wasn't anyone we could think of. The issues we've had with them have never really been more serious than them being a little loud at 3am on a drunken Friday night. So, we continue to live our normal lives. My roommate works third shift, while I and my neighbour worked second shift, although he had just recently switched to this from third shift himself. Nothing ever happened in a while and I was alone most of the time and figured it was over. Recently, however, I got a girlfriend and due to scheduling, we'll usually spend the night at her house in the middle of the week as those are often when my days off occur. Meaning at night, there's no one home except for my dog as my roommate only has weekends off. Last week, I was at my girlfriend's and things weren't going well. We'd had a bit of a fight So I was lying in bed, contemplating over things in my head, unable to sleep. As I am laying there, at around 2am, my phone buzzes. I check it, and see a text from my roommate, asking to call her when I get the text. I figure she's on break at work and just bored, or wants to shoot the shit about Overwatch since it had just came out and I hadn't got a chance to play it yet not having been home. I give her a call and she says she's at home and thinks somebody had been in the house. I ask her what makes her think that, and she says our friend and neighbour had gotten home late from his job at around 1.30am. He said he'd been home watching random stuff on YouTube, laughing rather loudly since he thought he was literally the only person in the house. He said he thought he heard someone walking around, and at first thought it was me, until he remembered I was at my girlfriend's. He wondered why my dog didn't bark, until he realised I'd taken my dog with me since my girlfriend's kids wanted to meet him. He called my roommate to ask her if she had called off work, when he said he started hearing scratching meow outside his window. 
He walked outside to find out our eldest cat outside, meowing to be allowed back into the house. Our cats never go outside normally, but had once before, so he scooped him up and went over to our apartment and put him down. He then proceeded to tell my roommate this, and she said that when she told her boss, he told her to go home, and said she found our front door unlocked, when she never leaves it unlocked, and the door to our sunroom was shut. We never shut that door since our cat's litter boxes are in there, and they wouldn't be able to get into them if we locked it. She's checking around and finds boxes moved out of our hall closet, and a bunch of my card game and board game boxes scattered around. Definitely not how we left them. She said she then heard him meow and found one of her cats shut in the bedroom. Every day before she leaves, she makes sure no cats are in there, since one has a bad habit of pissing on the bed if she's shut in there. Also, our bass guitar was knocked off its guitar stand and onto the floor. None of the cats weigh enough to knock that thing over, especially not our kitten who was shut in there. So, she gets freaked out and checks the windows. One in the sunroom is always open so the cats can sit in and get some air, but the screen is untouched. She went outside and found a trash can dug up against the house under that window, as if someone had stood on it to pee in. So, best we can figure, whoever this person was, he was sneaking around again, and when he didn't hear our dog, he broke in. They must have been in the middle of looking through our stuff, when they heard my neighbour laughing, panicked, and probably ran off. I'm not taking any of this lightly, and will be acquiring a gun since I'm often here alone at night. Number 3 This story is the number one reason my electricity bill is so high. I keep every single light in the house on when my boyfriend isn't home. I moved in with my boyfriend exactly one year ago tomorrow. We worked at the same place, and neither of us had a car. Work was a 20 minute walk from his house, and a two and a half hour walk from my house, so he was sweet enough to tell me to just move in since I spent the night every night anyway. We worked three days a week scheduled, and over time days we got to pick which days we wanted. Shifts were from 7pm until 7am. And to anybody who's been watching our house regularly, the pattern would be very obvious. I would be gone the same three days each week, then I would pick the first optional day as my overtime day, and my boyfriend would work all the optional days, that's six days a week. Our fairly regular schedule is important. Several months before moving in with my boyfriend, I was in a terrible relationship with a disgusting piece of shit who abused me and was finally removed from my home by the police and taken to jail for six months. He got out the day before I moved in with my current boyfriend, and was not happy. He then started harassing me, sending me death threats, and telling every mutual friend we had that he always carried a gun and would shoot me if he ever saw me. I got a restraining order, and although he couldn't harass me to my face, he started getting creative. He moved in with a girl who lived just around the block from me. After I begged her not to tell him where I moved to, she told him the same day I moved, and I'm 100% sure that is why he moved in with her. I believe he started watching my house and figured out my schedule. One day, I came home to find a teddy bear with a used condom around its head placed in the middle of my driveway when I got home. I recognized it and knew for a fact it was a teddy bear he'd given me months ago that I had given back to his stepmom with the rest of his things when he was in jail. I was super freaked out and finally got a car, so on days when my boyfriend would work, I would drive him, then drive back home, and when I came home, I always felt like someone was hiding behind a bush at the end of our property. One day, I finally looked behind the bush, and although no one was there, I found a crushed Nos can. Nos is way too sweet, the extremely cheap soda that my abusive ex was completely addicted to, and this made me even more sure he was spying on my house. After a couple of weeks of keeping all my doors and windows closed, I switched up my schedule. Instead of taking day one for overtime, I took day two. Since I had a doctor's appointment in day one, 
or I didn't want to be tired that night from a missing sleep. My boyfriend worked every overtime day as usual. He likes making money and is willing to work hard for it. I took my babe to work and got home, and within minutes could tell something was wrong. The way my house is laid out, the front door is in the living room on the east, the kitchen is to the south, and the dining room is to the west side of the kitchen, not visible at any angle from the living room, and has a back door. My normally quiet docile cats were losing their minds, both making a lot of noise and both running back and forth from the dining room. One of our cats was mine, and one was his when my boyfriend and I met, and my abusive ex would abuse her as well, so up until the cops took him away, my kitty spent every minute on edge, usually trying to hide between my legs for protection like a toddler. That was the biggest warning sign I didn't realize. While his cat was going into the dining room meowing, my cat would look at the dining room, then run back to me. All of a sudden, I heard the back door slam. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. As I crept around the corner, I saw the dining room light was on, and the screen door was pulled open while the glass door was slid shut and was unlocked. I knew for a fact that the light was off and both the glass and screen doors were shut, and the glass was locked when we left. My ex has since been arrested for breaking and entering a different house shortly after, and faces eight years in prison. Since going back into custody, all the strange things around my house stopped. I have been terrified every single night by this. Obviously, he knew which days I would be gone, and I caught him off guard coming home that day. I keep thinking about what ifs. What if he hadn't fled when he heard me come home? What if he made good on his death threats and promises to shoot me? I called the cops, and they said they couldn't do anything, since I couldn't prove he was the one that broke in. Hey guys, it's the Grim Reader here. I hope you enjoyed listening through that. If you did, please slap a like. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to be notified of future uploads? If you have a story you want me to narrate, please send it to my email in the description box. Once again, thanks a lot for listening.